Hello? Oh. Hello, everybody. Uh, can, we, can, can I take a selfie with all of y'all? It's so awesome that all of you have come up. Can we do this before we get going? Is this within scope eh, eh, of Internet Angular JS? Andy, do it. Hold this? Yeah, you hold it up. All right. Say cheese. cheese. Say Angular JS. Angular. Say MVC. Angular. Say Deep JS. Angular. Andy, you can do it. We did it. Awesome. <laughs> okay. So this is intro. What does it say on the screen? Intro to Angular JS for WordPress developers. I am in the right room. My name is Josh Pollock. I am out of range of my clicker. There we go. Um, if you're not familiar from looking at me, that's what I look like. Uh, I built two plugins, Ingot. It's an A-B testing plugin. Uh, and the interesting thing is that we built the admin interface in Angular. If you want to come back at 3 o'clock, I'll talk all about that. This is the basics of building a, uh, of Angular, front end, back end, whatever. These basics, I also make a uh, drag and drop form builder called Cadera WP. And the point that I'm telling you this about the plugins I make is because, I, hey, you should check them out on the internet. But also, I'm a plugin developer. And the stuff that we're talking about today could translate to I'm going to make a WordPress site that uses the REST API. I'm going to build a web app using the REST API in my choice as Angular. It, or it could translate to I'm going to build a plugin interface in my choice is going to be Angular plus the REST API. So this can really go both ways. But my experience, I don't make websites. I make tools for everybody else to make websites. Uh, also, at Josh412. If you go to my Twitter, the last tweet had a link to a uh, article that has a lot of information, including these slides. And there's going to be some code examples. You may or may not be able to make them out on the screen. They're all there. There's a link to a GIST that has every single one. Uh, so you'll be able to see that, and you'll be able to take this home and play with it. Uh, and that's the link. Also, that's my dog. More important, yes, this is a link that you're going to want to go to. It's in my Twitter. But here, Josh Preston, work at Miami. But more importantly, this is my dog Josie wrapped in a blanket. Um, there, there's some metaphor for that, and that's important. But go to my Twitter and get these slides up. And there's also a, one of the articles is a Torque article introduction introduction to Angular JS. Uh, this is the live at, live version of that. So obviously, as I said, we're talking about Angular JS for WordPress developers, and I want to touch briefly on why not something else. For me, personally, I can't tell you what framework you should use, because um, I'd have to put all of your problems in my head in order to solve, find whether or not this was the correct solution. But I wanted to share very quickly why this was the correct solution for me, is that I'm not an interface designer. I want it, I'm not, I'm a PHP developer. That is what I do. Yes, I'm a WordPress developer, so I do JavaScript. I do it a lot, but my core competency is PHP. But I believe that these JavaScript interfaces are the future. This is how we are going to increase the user experience in our sites, in our apps. I think this is really important. So for me to have a complex PHP ap application and have a layer on top of it for its interface that can work very quickly through Ajax, this was the solution for me. Most of my business logic is still in PHP. And uh, I'm using this as my UI level layer. That was the solution for me. Also, I like the way that the HTML is separated out. I like the way that it integrates with Bootstrap, so on and so forth. That's what led me to make this decision for me in my projects I'm working on now. Uh, so first thing we're going to talk about is MVC. Angular is an example of an MVC framework for JavaScript. Backbone is an example. React is an example. Ember is an example. And that means it is model view controller. Before you can use any of these, you need to understand what model view controller is. So let's talk about that in the sense of Angular. Model view controller has model view controller, right? And then the user sitting down here at the bottom. Right, we're done. We all get it. <laughs> it's a little tricky because it's not. WordPress traditionally does not use this pattern. Lots of people try and force it into this pattern. There's plenty of ways. I've been down that road. Um, but it's not what WordPress is. Think about view is easy. View is your template. How do you define? It's basically HTML becomes your view. Um, but it is a relationship between these three things. 
What does the user do to change the controller? Updates the model, the model's your stuff, we're gonna get more into detail. Um, so that the view says this. It is currently there. Uh, let's go through this a little bit quicker. Uh, the model. The model is the current state of data. The model's kind of abstract, there's no code. The next two slides, when I get into view and in controller, are gonna have some JavaScript and HTML over here. This isn't code, this is the current state of the application. This screenshot right here is in Chrome Inspector. I have this cool little add-on that lets me inspect the scope of AngularJS. So, right now, this is in this scope here. What is the current state of my application? Uh, I don't know, I have this array of objects and then you can drill down into here. This is the model. This is the current data, right? That the controller can put into the view. The view is the visual representation of your data. What data? What's currently in the model. So, it's basically, um, what is this from? Oh, we're working on refactoring the live commenting plugin, uh, it, it which currently uses you know, some jQuery stuff. We're doing, redoing it in Angular. So you can see this is looping through comments, right? This is an HTML file. This is my view, my template. How are we going to display the data? Oh, I don't know, we're gonna wrap it up in a div with the ID comment and then, you see the two curly brackets? That's representing the current object in the model. In this case, it's comment. What do I want to get from it? I want to get comment.id. That's the ID of the comment, right? So this is coming back from the REST API, and it's giving me an, ob you know, an object that represents a comment, comment that I've queried from the REST API. And then I want to go through and say comment.authorURL, author.avatar, comment. Somewhere down here, comment.content must appear. I don't know, maybe it could cut off, but right, that's the point of comments. Um, what data is that? It's what's currently in the model. I have one view that will be used for whatever state the model is currently in, okay? And when the model changes, this will change. How? Magic. <laughs> Angular is magic. The first time somebody really explained to me Angular, he said, Josh, do you know what magic is? And I said, I'm a nerd. I know uh, Arthur C. Clarke's third law. Magic is any technology sufficiently advanced to appear to be magic. Show your cell phone to somebody from 100 years ago. You showed them magic. <laughs> yeah, 20 years ago. <laughs> um, how does it work? How does it notice cache? What's cache? How does it cache this partial file in the browser? I don't know, but it's magic. It works. When I got hooked on Angular, this guy showed me this app he was working on, and he cleared his cache, he brought up the network inspector and loaded it, and all of those, you know, all those requests came through that you would expect, all the CSS, all those JS, all these different template files, all these API requests, and they clicked a menu item, and everything but the menu disappeared and got repainted, and there were three HTTP requests, and they clicked the next one, and there was one HTTP request, and then he clicked back to the first view, and there were no HTTP requests, why? Because Angular is magic and it figured out that, what it didn't, that it didn't need to go and get any of that stuff from the server. And that's why the browser was able to do it like this. Right? Browsers are fast. Computers are fast. The internet... Anybody here a Comcast customer? <laughs> For me, Comcast is good. The people I had before, it didn't work when it rained. Um, this stuff is very neat. Controllers. How do we know what is in the controller? What is, in this, what is in the model, sorry. What is my business logic to say, how do I get stuff from the server, and how do I put it into the current model, right? That's my, that is my controller. This is, this is a very tricky syntax, folks. Angular dot module, the name of the app, dot controller, creates a controller. Can we, we, we can get that? Do we need to go deeper into JavaScript or we can, we, can, we can do that? Look at this, this is a complete Angular app right here to loop through to get the infer base at the top, lines four, five, six, seven, eight, to get the site name, site description from the settings, right? And you, that's a controller called header. A controller called posts that's hitting from, this is a dev site for, that I was using in my course. Um, 
to get wp-json slash wp slash v2 slash posts. That is an AJAX request. Anybody here ever heard of jQuery? jQuery AJAX? You'll notice the syntax is almost identical for the HTTP interface. Think dollar sign HTTP. In your head, think dollar sign dot AJAX or jQuery dot AJAX. Your knowledge is almost 100% transferable there, right? This URL, I could put method equals post if I needed to. I could add a header if I needed to do authentication, exactly the same way that I would do in a jQuery. But I said, hit the post endpoint on that site. Success, right? Dot function equals scope dot post. What is available to me in that template that I showed you before? Scope. This variable scope is what is currently is going to be available in the template. So in the template that I use, I can do posts, and I'll have all my posts. I can use a repeater, which we'll talk about in a little bit, to loop through and have a post. Post in post, right, like we do a for each loop. By the way, this is a totally separate custom post type slash news. It's own controller there. So this is a complete Angular app to just show two different post types and get the, the information dynamic. What's interesting about this is, yes, they're all going to the same site, right? They're all whatever that URL is slash wp-json. There's nothing that would say these have to be from the same site. If you've got a scaling problem, why not move one custom post type to one site and one to another site? Make two AJAX requests in parallel. So let's talk about bindings. How do we tag, put this all together? We've got model, we've got view, we've got controller. Model's a little nebulous, but model is what the application currently has. The controller controls the model. The view displays the model, right? What brings them together? Bindings. Why do I like H uh, AngularJS? It's because I think HTML5 isn't broken. I think HTML5 is awesome. Data attributes in HTML5 are super slick. So let's talk about bindings. Um, they connect, our, they allow our view to connect to our controller. They are what binds the two together. Yeah, yeah. So this is a very basic uh, form that also displays the current state of the model, right? Div ng controller equals post example. What controller is this for? Post example, right? What are we going to do? We have a form here. Remember HTML forms? That's all we have here. Type equals text, but we say ng model post.title. That'll figure out the rest for you magically. And then down here we have a div that's showing post.title. In the um, Torque article that I have, I have a follow along, along with Plunker where you can like interactively do these. But what you would see is that as you type in post.title, this would automatically update on the fly. This display of what the post.title is. That's what Angular does. Because this is the same binding as that, the input in that display, as you type in that input, it'll automatically be there, and it'll be automatically updated in your mo inside of your controller. So if you want to make an HTTP request back to the server to update that post, it's there automatically. This experience that we've all had of jQuery, where it's like, OK, now it's time to save. Let me, do, let me target this field to put that into here, into data params, or let me serialize everything in my form and then make sure I have the, and then validate it. That's all over. Wrong direction. So, bindings, this is the other side, right? Bindings link the, the template to the controller. Same controller, post example. This doesn't have an HTTP request. We're just hard coding it to make it a little bit simpler for you. So you can see it that scope.post equals an object, literal, title, enter title. So if you were to create this, this would start with enter title in both places. But then when you change it, it would update the model. The scope is what is available in the view. Scope is essentially a local variable available to the view. Let's get a little bit more tri trickier with this in terms of bindings, because bindings can call functions. So this form right here, I've, it, this is similar to before, but I've added two new things to it. First thing I've added is on the form element, I've added ng submit 
equals submit. That's going to cause it to call the function submit when this, when this form is submitted. We'll, talk, we'll put that in your head for a second. We'll, we'll see that when we switch back to the controller. And then I'm using ng hide to hide the submit button. This is a Boolean function right now. If this, if ng hide will hide this if post.title is enter title, which is its default value. So that means that when it says enter title, the submit button will be hidden, and as soon as somebody changes it to something else, the submit button will magically appear. I could also put a function there if I needed more complex logic, and I could pass anything from the model back into it there. But forget it, it's a simple Boolean. Does it equal that? Else hide it, right? There's all sorts of these. I'm not going to walk you through every binding that's available. Angular has amazing docs. Every one of these, there is interactive docs where it says what it does in each, each parameter of the method, and then they have an example, and then you can open the example up in Plunker. Do we all know what Plunker.io is? It's sort of, it's similar to JS Fiddle or CodePen, uh, but it lets you run a JavaScript application in the browser. Uh, so it's a great way to learn this stuff. Really, how did I learn AngularJS? I read through the docs and went, okay, I think that makes sense. I opened up the interactive example. You, know, you could fork the example code and start playing with it. Plunker.io, but really go through the Angular docs. All of the docs have an open and Plunker link. That's what I'm saying, like get to know that uh, technology. So this is my view. This is my updated controller for that view now. Right, remember we added that submit. I don't need to do anything for that hide. Angular handles all that. You'll see there's no logic for that here. This is just done. But same scope.post equals title, right? Again, it's a mock. Uh, and then for now, scope.submit equals function, let's just say alert saving. Oh, getting ahead, right? This function will be executed when you click on submit. Just say alert saving right now. But we could put an HTTP request back to the server there, right? We're getting there. I'm going completely the wrong way here. I'm really good at this kind of stuff. I'm bad at the rest of the world. <laughs> this thing, confusing to me. Angular, yeah, it makes sense. Uh, we've, this is our controller again. Uh, okay, so this view here. I wanna talk about repeat. This is one more binding, ng repeat. We're all used to four in, in, or PHP developers here, for each loop, for each post in post. The syntax is the other way around. ng repeat post in post. So if you're a PHP developer, you have to mentally flip those around to make sense of it, but it's exactly the same thing. As long as we have posts, loop through them as post. Grab the first key of the array, call it post, render it, grab the next one, call it post, render it. So we have this in our scope posts, and then we're able to loop through those and do post.title. So it's exactly the same as before, but now we can have 10 posts, right? Uh, let's see, uh, but we need a slightly different model here, so let's look at the, the controller for this. Um, by the way, now you see that we have two controllers, right? This one up here is exactly where we left off. This one down here is new. That's post example, this is posts example. This is the difference between the archive view in a WordPress theme and the index in the single post view in a WordPress theme, right? We have one that's designed to consume lots of posts and show me a list, and we have one that's designed to show me details about one post, right? I go to your site slash blog, I see 10 posts. I click on one, I see one of those posts. Same thing here. Uh, we're still working with mock data, so it's just an array. Title, post one, title, post two, right? And that's what allows us, if I go back, to say, I have this array of posts, let's loop through it, every one, treat it as post. Just like a for each loop in PHP. Um, so that's a good question that he asked, which is, does it include this outer div? No, this is the outer wrap. So anything inside of that, if I had div before those two brackets, that would be repeated. Or if I had another, you know, if I did, uh, post.content that would be repeated. 
but the outer wrap that has the binding, that becomes what wraps this. So if I wanted to say, if I wanted to add a class to that called row, right, because I'm using bootstrap, I would put it there and then inside of it, I would do, you know, di you know column small three inside of it. So that way column small three got repeated. Or, you know, article, if I was doing, you know, a semantic for that. Which, by the way, is what I would do. I'm very interested in doing these sorts of things with Angular, but I'm always like jumping into 2015 or 2016 to see what's the correct way to do like uh, the header and the article and these things, because I just trust WordPress to know it. Um, HTTP. So I've been sort of dancing around the fact that it's nice for me to explain to you where I have a hard-coded controller where post title equals enter title. That's not entirely practical, right? That's where we start. But without an HTTP interface to connect back to the WordPress REST API, or any API. Honestly, I started with Angular because I wanted to play with Firebase. Firebase is really cool stuff. Definitely uh, get, your he get a chance to play with that. But you do need a remote API to give you some JSON for some data, right? WordPress REST API, anybody heard of that one? It's a good source. Um, Angular HTTP. Again, very similar to jQuery's HTTP interface, which is great because that's a good interface. Um, but um, it does use the promise syntax. So this is, uh, you can use success, but you can also use promises. So I'm now switched over to then. Uh, so this is very similar to like a jQuery when, Ajax then. Um, but you can see URL, this one's getting now, this example code's going to my site, joshpress.net, get me posts, ID one. And then, then response, scope.post equals res.data. The response from a promise puts its data, a resolved promise, it's right there in a key called data. So that's, the, that's what it would take to get a singular post. We can do this, right? This is not a quantum leap. I'm telling you, this is not that incredibly, this is fair, still fairly new to me, but my skills as a PHP developer, especially because I had gone into Symfony so I understood the MVC stuff, um, my skills as a JavaScript developer, they, it, doing mainly jQuery stuff, they all transferred over. This is nothing, another thing on top of that. If this is your first day on JavaScript, mm -mm, let's wait a little bit till we get into this. But if you've been doing WordPress JavaScript stuff, you should be able to get into this stuff. Uh, this one's slightly more complicated here because we're going to slash posts. We're getting multiple, we're gonna get the last 10 posts, right? This one at the bottom here, for post example. Scope.post equals res.data, right? So now I'll be able to do post in posts because scope.post is an array of posts. Um, but the other thing that I wanna do is read headers. So I can do pagination. The REST API gives you back these w XWP header sets that have cool stuff like total pages and total results. So now if I want to build pagination, res.headers is a method where I can pass in the name of a header and it puts that into a string. So if my site has 50 posts, five pages, I've now got 50 and five. So I can do logic for pagination there. Um, so it's very similar to that. Uh, this is just an, this is an example where we've added a save callback. Um, right, we could do call scope.save. Right, well, this is that post example where we can get the data and put it into post, and then down here I can have a function called save. What's it gonna do? It's gonna make a request to the same endpoint, but it's method post. Just like in jQuery, it defaults to get requests, but we can change it to post, delete options. Going further, this is part next. This is where y'all take over. This is the fundamentals of it. This is what you need to do to start hacking through it. The shortest version of this talk would be set up a, set up a view, set up a controller with some mock data and make it loop, and then start figuring out how to loop that into your HTTP API. Uh, you the HTTP API to hit your WordPress API on your site. So going further, uh, two things. One, um, I have a talk that's on WordPress TV that's on the server side of this equation, customizing the WordPress REST API 
to work with to serve custom APIs. That is 100% essential stuff to this. It's all PHP, it's out of scope for today. But um, these links are in my talk. You can get these slides on SlideShare. Uh, that's slides, video, more information. Um, and then the other one is, if you want a practical example of how to put this together, you can come back to this room at 3 p.m. today, and I'll be talking about my experience building a uh, WordPress single, uh, WordPress at plug and admin screen that's a single page web app with Angular. It's something that I've loved doing. Um, my name is Josh Pollock. Uh, my websites are calderawp.com and ingothq. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Josh412. The fact that this room is filled with people means a lot to me. Uh, <laughs> that if you, if people are interested in this stuff and that y'all want to learn it from me, it means a lot for me. Y'all are really awesome. I really appreciate it. Thank you.